Dear Adam, I am currently serving as an active duty Marine in Cherry Point, North Carolina. I am an MOS instructor. What that means is military occupational specialty. So when uh, Marines get through recruit training, their first 13 weeks boot camp, they then go to military combat or Marine combat training, which is, which is an abbreviated version of infantry school to learn all the basic combat skills so that Marines can live up to the standard every Marine rifleman. And then they go to their MOS school. So it's their first individualized training within the military. And it, it is a, a, a very unique time psychologically for people in the military. Because when you get, it, for, well, even, even, you know, well, boot camp is, is totally rigid, totally structured. You, you know, you can't do anything, at least, at least this is how it was when I went in. You couldn't have, you know, couldn't have cameras. You couldn't, you know, you, your entire time was regimented. There were, the, you had like an hour in the evening in which you had to, you know, and th this was not every evening, of course, but, uh, you know, some evenings if you were back at the barracks, and usually this time was taken up with, with, with all sorts of bullshit other things going on, but you'd have like an hour to shower, to shine your boots, to make your rack, to, to clean your rifle, to organize your gear, to do this for tomorrow. Like, there's so many other things. And if you got all your shit done on time, like you'd have free time to maybe write a couple letters home or maybe read some mail. That was, you know, the extent of it. So totally regiment. Then you get to Marine combat training, and because you're in the field most of the time, and you're doing things that are structured, and you're in organized activities, and you're not at your duty station. It's a short thing. It's like what just a couple few weeks here, and and it's it's also it's very regimented. Still, it's it's definitely more relaxed than boot camp. It's not all like you got to be at the position of attention all the fucking time, and it's always sir, yes, sir. You you start addressing your senior. Marines, because you're a Marine, you've earned the title at the end of boot camp, you start addressing them by rank. And so that's, that's a shift that happens at Marine combat training. But then you go to your MOS school, and for me it was artillery in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, the asshole of America. It was the first time that you had an opportunity to, to have real free time. And, and you would have duty on weekends and, and fire watch and shit like that, but you were generally uh, kind of, I, I don't want to say on your own, you're still, in, in MOS school, most Marines are still, uh, they're not at their final duty station, so they don't have regular housing yet. They're still living in some very controlled barracks environment. But it's the first time that you get to go like, oh, deep breath, so this is what being a Marine is kind of really like, and get a sense of that. And you're, you're working with MOS instructors like our friend AZ here. Every day I have a portion of the day with students called Z's News where we talk about a lot of the current issues we have with the government. Holy fucking shit, that's awesome! When I was in the Marines, we didn't have real conversations like that. I mean, if we had special conversations with our instructors, it was like, well, what's the best strip club in Lawton, Oklahoma? Oh, guess what? They're all fucking shitty. But whatever. So that's, that's not true. Dragon's West. I spent, you know, and I'm not into strip clubs. It was a pool hall that happened to have a lot of strippers. And I... It wasn't bad. Although, 3.2% beer in Oklahoma, fuck that shit. You had, they did sell gallon jugs though, glass gallon jugs of 3.2 beer, and so like, they'd sell it to people, it was, it was cheap, and they'd give you a couple cups. And I would just get one if I was drinking, just drink. this was back when I was a borderline alcoholic. And I'd you know, just drink out of the, out of the jugs. And, and with 3.2% beer, it is not easy being an alcoholic. I use some of your material for some of the talks I have with them, like abortion, ending the Fed, or anything else I can think of. Holy fucking shit. Do you understand? This is why I can't actually read your name, Mr. Z. Because if you get caught as a subversive within the U.S. military sharing Adam versus the man videos in your official capacity while you're on duty as an MOS instructor with your Marines, well, I hope you do and we make a test case out of this because that could be a lot of fun but I'm not gonna be the one to expose you with this email. I'm just really, really encouraged to hear that aside from the views that we see directly on YouTube and the emails that we get from people on active duty, and there are a lot of other ones, but I haven't, I haven't gotten anyone who said, I got, I got exposed to Adam versus the man from Adam Z's, or from, uh, from, his first name is not Adam, from Mr. Z's class. Wow. Whew. I will be getting out of the Marines as soon as I can finish my wage slave degree. My students have come to love watching your videos and listening to your podcasts. Really? 
really, now I'm, if I may, I hope this one gets shared with your Marines. And I just want to say that, uh, you know, when I, well, first of all, when I, when I turned 18 and crossed that imaginary line, I said I wouldn't forget about the people on the other side. And it's been incredible with what I've been able to do with Adam versus the man to see that we have developed such an incredible audience of high school students and middle school students who are emailing me. But in the same sense, I don't want to forget about those that are still dealing with the issues that I dealt with in the military, that I would have dealt with differently if I had the knowledge and perspective and the wisdom that I have today that I had to learn the hard way. And I am so, so deeply honored, Devil Dogs, to be able to share this with you. So thank you so much for being a part of this show by tuning in to Adam vs. the Man. There is really no greater honor that, that I can imagine for myself for Adam versus the man than to have my videos playing for, for, for fucking devil nuts at their MOS school. Holy fucking shit. Thank you. I have marched with you at the Ron Paul's The Choice of the Troops March on the White House and try to get out to any events I can. Well, I, you know what? I hope to meet you at the next one. I really do. And, and, and for, you know, if you're in Cherry Point, it's quite a drive. I'm really honored that you made the trek up to D.C. for that. And I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to meet you personally then because there were a lot of active duty guys there and every single one of them deserves a medal for, for being able to stand up to the commander in chief for turning your fucking back on Obama with us. Thank you. Yeah, you deserve a fucking medal for that. And, uh, you know, I hope you can get involved. I hope you can have more local events. But for stuff with me, adamversustheman.com slash calendar. Always got good stuff coming up in the D.C. area, but all over the country. And you know what? If you can figure out, if you, you know what? If, if, if you're on active duty and you want me to come talk to, to, to some troops, you know what? I'll, if, if you can figure out a way to cover my expenses, I'll do it for free. I'd love to come out and do that. If you can make, if you can make it part of an Adam versus the Man active duty outreach program, I would love it. And that's the reason I'm really reading this email, not to blow smoke up my own ass. Uh, as, as, as nice as this smoke is. I do everything in my power to educate these kids coming up through the Marine Corps and A, don't call them kids. Not that they're not, but they think they're fucking invincible already. And I think that I have done a decent job. If, if you've gotten them enjoying Adam vs. the Man videos, you've done an amazing job to counter the propaganda. Holy fucking shit. So far, I don't think my command knows what I'm doing. However, I don't really give a shit because all I'm doing is spreading facts around. Thank you. If you have the time, I would like to do whatever I can to spread the message of liberty with this program. Thank you for your time, and I hope to hear from you. A. Well, Mr. Z, I, I, I'm so I'm like I I I don't know what to say. I'm I'm so honored. I'm so uh, just it's 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 amazing to be able to provide something of value to first-term Marines, to junior Marines, and to Marines like yourself who have a little bit more perspective and want to share that with Marines in, in uh, your classes. But there is so much more that we can do on this. If you get this message and if you're listening to this and you're in the military right now, you probably have a captive audience somewhere, whether it's in your barracks or in a class or with those that serve underneath you. And underneath, I mean, uh, um, if they are underneath you in the military hierarchy, then they are definitely a captive audience for you. And if you get this message and you value it for yourself and you value the perspective that it represents, you have a duty to share it with those that don't get it yet. And in that sense, I want to see every single active duty libertarian fan of Adam versus the man turn into a fucking propaganda machine for the truth turn into a fucking machine for outreach and enlightenment and sharing the facts that you value that help your perspective, that make it easier to deal with the bullshit that you have to put up with when you're in the military, but worse, when you get out and when you come home from war. And being able to share that perspective, and for those of you that don't know, I was in Fallujah in 2004. I, I earned my stripes. I was a sergeant. And not only, not only that, I earned my Eagle Globe and Anchor by Chesty Puller standards, because he said, you're not a real Marine until you get busted down at least once or twice. And I did get busted down. I was a sergeant, got out as a corporal, but I really, let me just say, 
There is so much that you can do. If it would be of any value for me personally to be involved, to come out, I would love to be able to do that. I'd love to travel and, and, and be able to speak to different groups, but especially, especially groups of, of young military personnel. And I love it when they're at events and they're able to ask questions. And, and I feel like it's almost reaching into a whole different world with this message when you're able to reach out to active duty guys. But also, please join the conversation. We'll set up a special space for this at forums.adamversustheman.com for active duty outreach. If people want to put together literature and we can simply we can host the files at adamversustheman.com. We might even I'd, I'd be happy to get into the business of printing stuff. If, if someone wants to come up with a good Adam versus the Man active duty outreach flyer that you could pamphlet or you could you could put on on windshields on base. You know, I mean, come on, get creative here. I, and I understand I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble here. For those that have already you know checked out or about to, you know are counting the days till their their EAS, you know, then the opportunities really open up. But even working completely within the lines, there's so much you can do. But if, if there was someone that wanted to design an Adam versus the Man military outreach pamphlet, I'll put up the money myself, we'll print them, and we'll send them to anybody on active duty anywhere in the country who requests that. Let's wake people up because, as, as Albert Einstein said, the way that we end war is, well, what did he say? That, uh, well, first, what he said about insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But more importantly, he said the pioneers of a warless world are the youth who refuse military service. And it might be true that in the current world we live in, the military is necessary for this, that, or the other excuse to be satisfied and for people to feel safe and for the bullshit scam of government to continue. But surely anybody who appreciates, appreciates this message and sur surely any soldier who serves in any capacity who honestly wants to keep people safe and protected uh, will wholeheartedly support anything that works towards a warless world and in that sense spreading this message among people in the military at least getting them some perspective on how they will be victimized by the politicians and the douchebags that think they can tell them who to kill because it's going to make them rich and it's going to get money to their sponsors in the military industrial complex holy fucking shit you really owe it to yourselves to to do what you can to spread this message to those who are affected by it the most and at very least ensure that they do not follow unconstitutional orders, breaking their own oath of enlistment in which they swear to uphold the Constitution and support and defend it against all enemies in foreign and domestic. And as we found out the hard way, the greatest enemies of the Constitution are not to be found in the sands of some far off land, but rather right here at home. And if you want to defeat the real enemies of America, it's time to stand up for liberty. So thank you so much, Mr. Z, for writing. That's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for tuning into the Adam vs. the Man podcast. As always, you can send your love mail to Adam at AdamVsTheMan.com. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, it's interesting to me that our own government is watching Facebook in the first place. No kidding. Sergeant, are you having fun? We're going to have an event that's... Oh, excuse me. I, was, I think I might have been guilty of assaulting a police officer there.